The Port Washington branch splits from the main line just over half a mile east of Woodside Station. It then crosses under the Bay Ridge branch and runs for the next two and a half miles until it reaches its first station on the branch, Metzwillis Point. However, prior to 1985, the first station would have been just half a mile away at Elmhurst. Now go there today, and there isn't really much left of it at all. Today, I'm going to explain its history. The area that we know today as Elmhurst, or Newtown as it was originally called, was a rural community during the mid-1800s. That was until there was an influx of settlers who came to Newtown looking for work. This proved to be an opportunity for an infant flushing railroad, who had just opened their line in 1854 from Hunters Point to Flushing. The railroad was originally chartered in 1852 and was the first railroad in Long Island not to be part of the Long Island Railroad. The next year in 1855, the company opened a depot and a station in Newtown called, uh, well, Newtown. Now keep in mind, the railroad at this time was on street grade level, meaning that the tracks and the station were on the ground. In 1859, the company was reorganized into the New York and Flushing Railroad. In 1863, the railroad created a subsidiary called the North Shore Railroad to extend service from Flushing to Great Neck. On October 27, 1866, this extension opened. However, residents of Newtown eventually became dissatisfied with the New York and Flushing's poor service, which caused the company to sell the entire line to the Long Island Railroad in 1867. This would be the first time Newtown Station was owned by the Long Island Railroad. And I say first time because of something that would happen later. The purchase allowed the LIR to use the line to the Long Island City Terminal, which prevented their deadly rival, the Southside Railroad of Long Island, from using it instead. The Southside, by the way, was controlled by Willard Charlick, brother of the LIR's Oliver Charlick, so you could say that this move was done out of sibling rivalry. In 1868, German businessman and future owner of the Long Island Railroad, Conrad Poppenhusen, incorporated the Flushing and Northside Railroad in order to compete with the New York and Flushing, and he also gained control of the Flushing and Woodside Railroad, which was originally created by the Long Island Railroad back in February of 1864, but it was soon left unfinished due to the Long Island Railroad buying the New York and Flushing instead. The Flushing and Woodside Railroad became the Woodside branch of the Flushing and Northside. It opened in 1868, running from Winfield Junction near the current Woodside Station, and having two intermediate stops paralleling the New York and Flushing. The branch would then end at a junction in Flushing, where it had connections to either A, the Whitestone branch which opened in 1869 by an affiliate of the Flushing and North Side called the Whitestone and Westchester Railroad, or B, the former line of the New York and Flushing east of Winfield Junction in Woodside, which, including Newtown Station, was bought up by the Flushing and North Side from LIRR control in 1869. The rest of the New York and Flushing was bought up by the South Side, which could finally run trains into Hunter's Point. However, the section between Laurel Hill and Winfield Junction was abandoned by 1880. But back to the Woodside branch, it was eventually merged with the Flushing and North Side officially in 1871, when it was subsequently abandoned in favor of the Flushing and North Side's main line, which, keep in mind, used to be part of the New York and Flushing Railroad. Also in the same year, Conrad Poppenhusen retired, and his three sons, Alfred, Adolph, and Herman, took over. Now, the Flushing and North Side actually had proposed extensions west of Great Neck, and in case they were to actually happen, two railroads were planned, the North Shore and Port Washington Railroad, and the Roslyn and Huntington Railroad. However, on June 19, 1874, the Flushing and North Shore consolidated with the Central Railroad of Long Island, the Central Railroad Extension Company, the Whitestone and Westchester Railroad Company, the North Shore and Port Washington Railroad Company, and the Roslyn and Huntington Railroad to form the Flushing, North Shore, and Central Railroad. During this time, competition between the different railroad companies in Long Island was at an all-time high. The Flushing, North Side, and Central were the strongest among its two rivals, the South Side Railroad of Long Island, and the Long Island Railroad. The South Side declared bankruptcy in 1874, and it was then bought up by the Poppenhusens and united with the Flushing, North Shore, and Central. In 1876, the LIR was facing financial issues, when its interests were also bought up by the Poppenhusens. This meant that the Flushing, North Shore, and Central had control over the Long Island Railroad, the South Side, and the Flushing, and North Shore, which included Newtown Station. However, it was the LIR that would eventually come out on top, because it would soon be the one to operate all the other lines, with train cars employing the LIR label. It was at this point when Newtown Station became a Long Island Railroad stop for the second time. In 1888, the depot was demolished and rebuilt in December of that year. In 1896, Newtown was renamed to Elmhurst, and so was the station in 1897. Fast forward to 1910, the Public Service Commission approved grade crossing elimination on this line. In 1912, Elmhurst Station became elevated. Also in the same year, the tracks were electrified. In 1927, the station was demolished and rebuilt once again. It lasted all the way up until the 22nd of January 1985, when it was demolished for good. Today, there is little to nothing left of the station itself, but there are a few remnants. Head to where the Port Washington branch crosses over Broadway, and if you look up at the bridge, you will see some steel structures on the side. These used to hold up the platforms of Elmhurst Station, and at each side of the bridge, brick formations are where the stairways used to be. Oh, and there's just one more thing. 
Between 43rd Avenue and 88th Street, there is an underpass which originally opened with the elevated station. While exploring the underpass, I found these small side platforms, which I'm not sure if they are actually part of the station. And so that concludes this video on the not too well known former station here in Elmhurst. Of course, we have the Elmhurst Avenue station on the New York City subway, but a low on railroad station could have been beneficial to Elmhurst generally, providing a transfer to the subway station. It could possibly have also taken pressure off both the Queens Boulevard and Flushing Line stations. In fact, proposals over the past few years have been made to reopen the station, but so far, nothing has really happened. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, then consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time.